Hello, everyone. Welcome to the NTI Pod Talk. My name is Diane Kaler, and I'm the director of Nutrition Therapy Institute. This pod talk is our opportunity to have fun conversations with interesting people who have interesting things to say about nutrition, food, and health. I talk to NTI instructors, students and grads, to health industry professionals, to farmers, and anyone else who has an interest in nutritional wellness. While many of our listeners come from within the NTI community as students and grads, we also have prospective students who tune in. And to those listeners in particular, I hope you find that the people we talk to inspire you to finally make the jump to pursue your passion and come to school here at NTI. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the NTI Pod Talk. My name is Diane Kaler, and I'm the Director of Nutrition Therapy Institute. Today, I'm speaking to a graduate of NTI, uh, Kelly Miller, who I'm always excited to talk to graduates and hear about what they're doing and how they are using their knowledge and their skills to impact the world. And so we have another one of those uh, fascinating discussions. So Kelly, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be yeah. here with you today. Absolutely. Well, so, you know, I, I always like to know, how did your interest in nutrition start? Why did you, you know, want to, first of all, how did you start thinking about nutrition? And then why did you want to go to school to really delve into the subject and become an expert? Yeah. So I had an interest in health, maybe not specifically nutrition from a very, very young age, I had a family member that was just sick all the time. And I lost my um, older brother to cancer when I was just seven and he was 15. He had leukemia. Oh. And so from a young age, I knew that like health was important. Um, and then as I got older, I started to hear that nutrition was very important, but I was very much one of those people that felt like I kind of know what to do, but I don't do it. Um, and in my teenage years and early twenties, I just really was eating like probably much worse than the standard American diet. I had fallen into addiction issues. I smoked for 20 years. I was living a really unhealthy lifestyle and that created tons of tension for me, but I didn't know how to reconcile that. Um, I didn't know anyone that was healthy. I really didn't. And so it all came to a head for me when I was 30 and was diagnosed with multiple autoimmune disorders in the span of just a couple of years. Like so many people in this realm, yeah. we experience a health crisis ourselves, And that's when I really dove into nutrition head first. The medical world didn't really have many answers for me. So mm -hmm. I sort of went out on my own and started looking for those answers and implementing things on my own. And that's really when I started to see that it was working and my symptoms were resolving that I went, I need to look at this further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you find out about NTI? It was a friend. I had started the search for different types of holistic nutrition schools long before I started at NTI. And I really looked at a lot. I looked at so many and a friend knew that I was interested and she was a graduate. Her name was Susanna. Um, she was a graduate of NTI and referred me. And so I made the call and I started asking all the same questions. And it was really that focus on the deep scientific knowledge that was going to be provided to me through the coursework in conjunction with the holistic angle, that was what helped me to decide to pursue an education um, at NTI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, thank you to your friend, Susanna, um, mm -hmm. for recommending you. And, you know, I, that is very typical. Um, people do their due diligence and investigate other schools um, when, once they decide to go down this path of, of learning about nutrition, uh, and, you know, they, they often come to the decision about NTI because of our science-based education. And that is something that we definitely talk about all the time that we really refer to the science and, and we, we base everything in the science, but then, as you say, we add this very much holistic approach. So we are not sort of you know, the, um, the, the dogmatic, uh, sort of USDA, um, information, but we have this holistic approach that is science-based. So, 
Um, thank you for mentioning that. So, you know, speaking about our curriculum and what you learned, was there some sort of like concept or, or subject that really resonated with you that you gleaned information that you still continue to use today in your practice? Oh, absolutely. I would say the most fascinating information was learning just about the way that the body uses nutrients. Um, it, you, you know that it impacts your health in some way, but the far reaching implications of that were really mind blowing to me. And I remember I had this one instructor that would always ask this question, what is the mechanism of action? You know, and that made us constantly have to go back to the coursework and the textbooks and really get a deep understanding. And when we were being tested on the different pieces of information too, we had to be able to explain what the mechanism of action was. And so I walked away from NTI really understanding sort of the the cascade of events that takes place in different scenarios. And blood sugar regulation is a huge part of what I do. That's been the most fascinating piece of my work. And just the other day, I was explaining to somebody who was experiencing high blood sugar spikes, the, the, the implications, the health implications of that. And she was like, I've been hearing my whole life that like diabetes is bad, but I never understood the connection between how Mm. blood sugar impacts the health of your blood vessels. Um, And Mm -hmm. so she, her mind was just blown and she's in the health and wellness world. So I'm I'm constantly utilizing the information that I learned and, and helping people to understand it from a completely different angle. That's awesome. Great. Well, good that you can help educate those who are in the field that um, is, is, you know, ostensibly providing healthcare to the public, but um, we certainly play a major role in that as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right. So you graduated, you know, fairly recently within the last 18 months or so. Um, And what have you been doing since you graduated? What's your practice? What do you specialize in? Yeah, so I actually started my practice when I was still um, deeply entrenched in the coursework and just sort of slowly started to build that up. That was one of the other great benefits of being at NTI. I didn't have to wait till I graduated to start working Mm -hmm. with clients, but Mm -hmm. I knew going into that program, I wanted to specialize in nutrition for addiction recovery. And so that is all that I do. Um, So I have a virtual practice. On Tuesdays, I do work at local treatment centers, detox, residential, different types of PHP programs in the addiction treatment world. And I run nutrition for recovery um, groups. I facilitate groups at those places. So that's been really, really amazing. But outside of that one day, the rest of the days I'm doing one-on-one work with clients. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's what I specialize in. So you said PHP. Can you tell us what PHP stands for? That stands for uh, partial hospitalization program. So it's individuals who may be going to a day center and getting lots of psychoeducation and therapy, but then they ultimately go home and sleep at their house or at a sober living facility. Gotcha. Okay. And my assumption would be that while our education is in-depth and comprehensive, we definitely don't focus here on, you know, just addiction And so my assumption is, is that you would have had to have done additional training, additional education. Is that correct? Yeah, I've done a lot of additional training, but it was really the program at NTI that helped me understand how to read studies and do research Ah. to see what data was already out there in terms of what the special needs were of that population. Um, So although I've done a lot of extra certificates in education, um, really understanding the impact of nutrition on something like a person who's in recovery, um, I definitely did glean that part of it from the program. Yeah, nice. Um, So do you, when you're working with people who who are in some sort of an addiction recovery program um, and you're doing some kind of uh, nutrient assessment on them, do you see common nutrient deficiencies? Oh, yes. I mean, we have a lot of data to show what that population is most commonly dealing with, but we really see a lot of protein deficiency and it may not be exactly the the cutoff um, that you would see in other countries where people are very poorly um, malnourished in protein, but they are dramatically under consuming protein, which manifests in a lot of mood type uh, symptoms. So we really look a lot at that, but vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, potassium, we see these all the time, magnesium, Across Mm -hmm. the board, there tends to be a lot of nutrient deficiencies, both because of lack of intake, but also a lot of absorption issues because digestive issues are very common for that population. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so how do you uh, make recommendations to your client? Do you do mostly food-based? Do you do supplements? And then how do you deal with the fact that they have absorption issues? Yeah. So I I use a number of tools. Everybody that I work with does a a food diary. So we're looking Mm -hmm. at dietary analysis from the perspective of what are they taking in? Mm -hmm. But I also have a number of assessment tools that will help show me how are they absorbing or potentially utilizing these nutrients and how that's manifesting in different symptoms. Um, So we have, we have a number of ways that we address it. Food is always the foundation. I'm a heavy believer that food is the foundation. And For most people, we can actually get them to a really great place with food alone. But Mm -hmm. I do use really targeted supplementation as well, just Mm -hmm. kind of combining all the information that we get from the assessments and the intake. Um, Sometimes you have to fill in those gaps for people, and that can really make a big difference as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, you know, we here at NTI, we always talk about, you know, we are doing... um, education about whole foods nutrition. That is our first frontline, you know, first line uh, therapeutic um, target is for food first, because, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard this and the, the, the saying is in the field of nutrition, um, you can't supplement your way out of a crappy diet. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're continuing to, to uh, uh, you know, utilize that concept that food really does need to be the first line of attack and then doing targeted supplementation to fill in potential gaps with, you know, if they've had absorption issues for years, um, there may need to be uh, some targeted supplementation, at least in the short term, um, Mm -hmm. along with the diet. So, um, all right. So I understand that you've developed sort of uh, your own proprietary protocol, the pause protocol. Can you talk about what that is? Sure. So through the training that I've had and uh, the the available data, we actually have decades and decades of research that's available to show us what are the, you know, the unique um, and common nutrient deficiencies that people from this population are suffering from. And it can be different from one substance to the next. So somebody who's been abusing alcohol for years may have a different um, set of nutrient deficiencies and issues than somebody that's been abusing another substance. But really, in order to fulfill all of those nutritional needs, there is a framework that works. If somebody were to go to the doctor and say, hey, doc, I've got diabetes or heart disease or some other issue, high blood pressure, you know, should I be looking at my food intake? Very likely they might give them a handout that says, well, here's a here's a dietary intervention that might work for what you have going on. But if somebody went to the doctors and said, hey, I'm in recovery does food matter? They're going to get a wide range of answers. Everything from no, it doesn't matter to, well, just eat less and move more or just eat more vegetables. You know, um, there's always going to be some sort of answer to that. They don't have a framework. And so I took the data that was available. I took the information that I've been gathering through working with clients, because that's really like where the rubber meets the road. And you get such a deep understanding of what your client population is dealing with. And I created a dietary intervention. It is not restrictive. It is just simply a framework that you can customize for people in recovery to really help address all of the the unique needs that they're dealing with. And we call it the PAWS protocol because PAWS, P-A-W-S, stands for post-acute withdrawal syndrome, which is really what people in early recovery that first one to two years are dealing with, all sorts of mood imbalances and really a lot of blood sugar imbalance for most people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting. That's awesome. Um, I think it's so important to, yes, have a template, have a, you know, sort of a roadmap, but not have a very specific cookie cutter approach for every single person. Because, Absolutely. you know, as, as you well know, everybody has unique needs, unique biochemical individuality and all that. So mm-hmm. you need to do those uh, uh, tailored plans for clients. And, um, you know, going back to what you were mentioning, uh, going to the doctor with any health condition, I would bet that the answers you said um, that you would get in addiction would be the same answers you'd get for most health conditions, all the way from, no, what you eat has no bearing on your health to, ah, 
just eat more vegetables and you'll be fine, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's 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 pretty typical in most health conditions, I would say. But absolutely. Uh, anyway, so you have chosen this path because you have, um, you know, it, it resonates with you. You might have some personal reasons why you've chosen this path to be in uh, nutrition for addiction recovery. Of course. All of our students come in with varying ideas about what, what they would like to do once they get out, all the way up to not knowing what they want to do when they get out. Mm -hmm. So do you have any advice uh, to um, current students or prospective students about thinking about how, what they actually want to do once they graduate? How do they want to use the skills and the knowledge? How do they... You know, how do they want to stand up in the world once they graduate and um, and go out and start making that difference? Um, you know, what, what's your advice for, for those who may not know exactly how to proceed to make those decisions? Sure. I think it really contains two different things. And one of them is asking yourself really what energizes you. You know, why are you doing this? What do you get excited about when you think about talking to somebody about working with an individual on? Because if you can figure out what really brings you that joy, you won't, it won't feel like work to you. It'll just feel like you're living out your purpose. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would say is trust the process of experimenting a little bit. You may come out of this thinking, I know exactly how I'm going to do this, but it can often be the experimentation that allows you to figure out what the right format is for you. Some people may think I'm only going to be online or I'm only going to be in person or I'm only going to work for a doctor or I'm only going to work for myself. And really for me, I've found a combination of things that works and I've been able to do that through just being open-minded and experimenting with the different formats of how I want to work with people, self-employed versus employed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think those two things have been the, the most helpful for me. Um, and I would just say, uh, don't give up. It can be challenging if you feel like you're in that place of like, how am I going to use this education in a practical way? Mm -hmm. If you love what you do, and if you went to NTI, you have the, all of the foundational, um, needs met to be able to do this work, you'll, you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you know, maybe something that I didn't catch in your earlier discussion about how you came to nutrition. Did you know that when you graduated, you wanted to work in addiction recovery? I mean, you said you started working in this field before you even graduated. So was that, was that your plan when you came to school or did your plan evolve as you were in school? So I, yeah, I attended NTI because I wanted to work with people in recovery from gotcha. a nutrition okay. standpoint. So okay. that part, I did know my yeah. niche was down packed, but the format of being, you know, online versus I, I really, for a long time, didn't know if I wanted to be self-employed or work for other people. Mm -hmm. Um, so that part did evolve over time for mm -hmm. sure. Nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Well, so we've talked a lot about, um, your, your work that you do and, um, you know, what's your interest in nutrition? So for you personally, what does being healthy mean in your life? Mm. Yeah, that's such a good question. You know, for me, I think I lived most of my life in a very reactive way, really having no understanding of why I was reaching for the things that I did, whether it was certain types of food or other types of substances and just putting them in my body all the time and going through life going, why do I feel so bad? Um, and I don't understand, you know, um, cause I didn't see people around me eating healthy and they didn't seem to feel as bad as I did. And so for me, it's really about moving from that reactive state to being resilient. And the way that I did that was to really understand my own bio individuality, to understand the language of my own body. I, one of the most freeing things I've ever experienced is that my, I know exactly how to read the signs of my body. I know when I haven't had enough protein. I know when I haven't had enough carbs. I know when I haven't had enough sleep. Some things are obvious, but other things can be more elusive. And when you spend the time to understand how all of these things affect you as a person, your health, wellness, and how you show up in the world. And you pay very close attention to how do I feel when I eat chicken versus fish and that sort of thing. Um, it allows you to function so much more optimally. So for me, it's really about always having a plan, you know, 
But even in situations where the plan's totally thrown out the window, you know, you're stuck on an airplane for five hours or something and you weren't expecting it. I know what to do in those situations and immediately after to get myself back on track. Cause I'm mm-hmm. so, I'm so close to what we call homeostasis. We talk mm-hmm. about that a lot at NTI, mm-hmm. that sense of balance. Mm-hmm. I used mm-hmm. to be so far away from it that it was hard to get back. But now if anything throws me off balance, the path back to balance is so quick and known that, um, life is just so much easier now and for, and more yeah. fulfilling. And because mm-hmm. I'm well-nourished and my foundation is so good, it allows me to enjoy so many other aspects of my life that I couldn't when I was sick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, um, you know, a great testament to how making changes in your life that yes, have a lot to do with food, but I'm sure have to do with other things as well. Um, you know, can, can really bring benefits and what you were mentioning, uh, just a moment ago about recognizing the signs that your body is giving you that you are out of balance, not in homeostasis. That is such an important skill that we need to teach our clients, right? Because um, they may not even recognize the influence of their choices acutely. And so helping them to develop that skill to be able to do that, I I think that's a really important piece of being a nutrition therapist. And, you know, particularly in your field where you're working with people who have, um, uh, or, you know, in addiction recovery, uh, may, maybe there is something a little bit even more um, useful in that need to be able to identify what the, the signs are that their body are giving them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, this has been an uh, interesting conversation. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. How can people find out about you and, and, uh, if they want to contact you to work with you, how can they do that? Yeah. My point of contact at the best place is my website. It's the addiction nutritionist.com. I actually am starting my own podcast, which is coming out in a few weeks. And I have a group program that will, uh, enrollment will be opening for in a few weeks. And all of that will be updated on the website within the next week or so, but the addiction nutritionist.com, you can email me sign up for a free consultation, get connected to the podcast or the online group. Um, uh, yeah, it's always the best place to reach me. So great. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, perfect. Well, thanks so much. And, uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Hi there. And thanks for listening today. If what you heard today inspires you to want to pursue an education in holistic nutrition here at nutrition therapy Institute, please check us out on our website ntischool.com and reach out to us at admissions at ntischool.com. Our in-depth comprehensive education is sure to provide you with the knowledge and skills you need to create the work of your dreams. Do something that feeds your passion, aligns with your values, and fuels your drive for a vital and meaningful life. It will be rewarding for yourself, your family, and anyone else with whom you interact. And with that, see you on the next episode.